Hey everybody, um, figured it's about time for another video on Emacs. I haven't been um, doing too much over the last month. Uh, mostly I've been under the weather, but I'm feeling better now, and so that's a good thing. Um, so this was something that um, on and off I've been meaning to deal with this. Um, but you know it's been a constant annoyance not with emacs but with my workflow and then i just finish what i'm doing it's not a big deal and then i move on and uh, the other day i finally said you know you got got to do better than this um so before we even get to that um i want to show another package that i just discovered um you know just sometimes i look um um and here you'll notice here i have configuration on the bottom for um uh perspective mode and um uh isn't it really uh, perspective mode? Um, and uh, perspective mode, I've been looking into one of the big contributors is a friend of mine, um, but I, I just still can't, it's just not working for me. So um, I'm gonna try it again and then maybe I'll do a video on that. But I found this little package called, um, let's see if I get the name right, keypression mode. Um, so it was basically, um, you yeah, know, so let's go, let's keypression. Emacs Lisp, and we'll just do a very simple use package uh, key pression um, and ensure T, and we'll just save this and we'll just run this. And then if we go to key pression mode, and it, it seems to be a little quirky right now, but and it seems very quirky right now. Um, I don't know why it's doing that. Uh, let's see. There we go. Uh, it has to do with the font I'm using, uh, but notice that it's giving me the keystrokes. Uh, I guess it's hard to read there, so I'm just going to turn it off. Um, and um, you know maybe I'll look into it a little bit further later. Uh, but what it basically was doing is it was doing the keystrokes. Um, I, I guess maybe if um, yes, yeah, so the font it seemed to be affected by the font. I'll make the font much smaller just temporarily, and go to key pression mode. Go to the scratch buffer. Yeah, so so it seems to be font based like there's some font issue there like um, I'm seeing on my screen here you know I'm seeing the letters appear but they're small and when I just load it up actually let's even try that again let's let's just run up um, a new Emacs and again this is not about Uh, this is not about compression mode. I just found it the other day and was like, really cool. There we go. You see, and you see, you see, you can see your, you can see your keystrokes there, like I was using display key for, and that's really cool. But I'm going to, I should have tested it. So I'm going to turn it off for now, and then we can talk about what I really wanted to talk about. So basically. Um, one of the tools that I've been using on and off, but I haven't really gotten into, is DiRed. So if I go to DiRed, uh, just run DiRed, and I'll run it on here. Uh, let's bring the font back up again. And th I, I just made this directory special for, uh, for what we're doing. Um, I've got a bunch of files, and if you're doing a regular text file, you can just you know hit enter and visit that file. Um, you know, or, you know, hit enter here, that's, you know, whatever my, um, e you know, that's my Emacs config, but a copy of it. Um, that works, and you can do all your navigations and stuff, but one of the problems is, um, what about things like um, non-text files? So you'll see here I've got um, a docx file that I'll use LibreOffice and a couple of other ones in here. Um, I've got, uh, these are the last statements uh, from Texas death row inmates that I used in my class sometimes. Um, you know, and then another nice thing here about, um, you know, the, the voting and voting is from a little project on um, gerrymandering that I plan to use in my class, one of my classes next year. So on a zip file, I can just hit enter and it goes into the zip file. And then I can even, you know, I mean, it's not great because that's an HTML file, but I can just, this is better, it's easier to see it's a CSV file. But um, but basically, you know, it can do the zip files, and that's really nice. But it 
you know, like, well, I mean, but what about other files? So a PNG file, it's nice because it just brings that up. Um, and PDFs are okay, but the problem with PDFs, let's see if I have one. Yeah, these are some course notes that I wrote for uh, when I taught computer graphics. Um, it works, but it doesn't work um, if it's a big PDF. Like here's a Haskell programming book that that I bought that I mean to go through one of these days to really dive into Haskell. I've just kind of done a little abortive ones because well, closure talks more to me, but whatever. Um, and, you know, Emacs chokes on that. And the same thing here, I've got these docx files and I can, you know, this is from that gerrymandering project and that works, but here this, it'll, it'll just choke on it. It's just too big. Um, also, it's, um, I can't edit my, my docx file. You know, I can't do anything with it. Um, usually when I deal with PDFs, um, you know, I, I sometimes I like using events externally and sometimes I use the Emacs browser. Um, but for a docx, usually if I'm loading it, I want to edit it. Now, what I'll normally do, and, um, you know, I, I use a combination of the shell and Emacs. Like I have an Emacs window up and I have my terminal window. I'll do, I'll use image magic or something like that, you know, to display, to display my images and um, it's bigger, but I'll, you know, I'll, I'll do LibreOffice or I'll do events, but, but the problem with that is that's okay if I'm doing work, but there are other times when I'm working on a document and I need LibreOffice up and I may or may not, you know, I, I may not need Emacs up, but I'll have Emacs up, but what happens is, I want to do my work, but I don't want to have super cluttered all these windows. And so if I'm bringing up a bunch of LibreOffice files, you know, or a, a LibreOffice file, I'll be like LibreOffice, and then let's go, you know, let's go to this. And this is a larger file, but then, you know, then I'm also going to, let's make another terminal window, or I can put that into the background and I can go within some, you, you know, and so I, I get these, you know, multiple terminal tags um, cluttering my window space, cluttering my screen, um, because I've got this guy up here, this terminal, and my LibreOffice, and I always have Emacs up, and I'll probably have a web browser up too, and that just gets a little annoying. Um, so what I ended up doing, I was working on something yesterday, and so I was like, oh, okay. Um, I'll click on, you know, the files thing, and then I'll go into the directory. So I'll go into the sync directory and then demo files. And then I will, I'll load my file uh, and then I can close this and it's not that bad. But I figured there has to be a better way. Um, and of course, there is. So with Emacs, there are a number of choices. Well, one choice is you can do something like this. Um, and I found this, you know, I found this online and um, make a little fo a function. So, um, and one of the problems with the diared thing is it's all within this window. And a lot of times, like, I want to leave my Emacs window here. I want another window. Like, I don't want this in here. I want that to be another window. Not always, but sometimes. So this guy here does that. Find file other frame, so let's run that. And so if I'm here, if I do find file other frame, uh, sorry, it's dired find file other frame. And notice that it brings up another window, another Emacs window. So this is one solution that works pretty well. Um, and what it'll do is, you know, I can do the same thing here. I got my PDF. Well, let's just use the docx. So it's uh, the small one. The red. I don't, I, I'm not. Uh, I'm not binding this to a key. Um, but if you, if I want to stay with an Emacs, this type of solution works pretty well. Um, so let me. Whoops. Get rid of that. Um, another solution is built into Dired. I can hit the ampersand, um, and actually, let's see what that is. Um, that runs. So I did Control H K for key, and it's Dired do async shell command. 
and so if I do that and I type events, now it's going to run events on this file. Um, and that's kind of nice because now I can run an external viewer. Um, so let me close that, or if I can go to here for the docx, and here I can run LibreOffice, and that brings that up. Um, so that's kind of cool. Um, so that's another possibility. But there's yet another possibility, and that's using something known as um, OpenWith. And I actually have this pre-written in another window, so I'm just going to paste it over. Um, I have to change it a little bit. Uh, so the first thing I'm going to do is use package open with ensure true. Well, let's get that installing. Um, so that's installed. And then I have to, let's get this all formatted a little bit better. There we go. Um, then I just have to set up my associations. And I'm not sure, I just found this yesterday when I started playing with this. I'm not sure if this is what I want or not, but I'll stick with it for now. Um, but I grabbed this literally, I cut and pasted this from the open with Git repository. You know, I found it through Melpa. Um, and so I'm saying here, if my file ends with doc, docx, or Excel. SX, I'll use LibreOffice. Um, if I'm using it JPEG, these guys will use the viewer, this will use events, and I'll go into open office, mo open with mode. So now I'm going to have to restart a few things here. So let's, actually, let's just clear all this stuff out. And so now if I do the red, and let's go to sync demo files. And now if I just hit, you know, like regular file, um, that's normal. But if I go over to here to, let's say, graphics book, because of open with, it's now spawning this off as an external viewer, which is sometimes what I want. Uh, you know, the same thing with an image file. And again, I didn't have to do this. I could have left this in, um, you know, or even, you know, with this larger um, file. And, of course, the same thing with uh, the XLSX file. Um, same deal. So, so this is kind of cool. Um, I haven't decided if I'm going to keep this exactly as is or not. Um, I think this might lead me to live in Dired a little bit more, which is a, a cool thing. Um, I, I have to make a decision. I'm, I'm mixed because I almost always want to go external for image files like this. Um, because usually I want to bring a bunch of them up um, either in a, um, and I could do it in an external Emacs frame but since I'm not doing anything with the with it in Emacs I'm just looking at it and then I'm more likely to use like the image processing tool uh, like I, I guess everyone's you know I, I, I want everyone to hate me so I'll show this um, so like I decided I finally um, I'm getting my Hunter web page up and running, um, you know, my personal web page. And I decided, at least for starters, I want to make the cheesiest web page as possible. Um, uh, so I'm doing this 90s style. So, you know, I got the tiled background. I got the marquee tag. You know, I got the animated GIFs here. I had to make these animated GIFs, and I did this with Image Magic. Um, so I'm not going to use Emacs for that. So that works. The docx and the xlsx, I'm almost always going to want to use LibreOffice on it. So I'm going to want those to be external. Uh, the PDF is a mixed bag. Sometimes I like doing it in Emacs. Sometimes I like doing it in events or another viewer. So anyway, that's open with um, and uh, some other options for Dered. So I hope you liked it. And that's it for today.